When I think about rogues, I of course think about Astarian. I also think about how the class could be more interesting at creation. So I coded a rogue subclass available at level 1. Why did I theme it around Pigpen with passive stealth themed around his dust cloud? Let's just say that I thought up some fan fiction with Pigpen growing up quite nicely and promptly attacked by a vampire and developing white hair. Hey everyone, this is I'm a Dr. Nada, here with another great guide on making mods for Baldur's Gate 3. Today, after many requests from my subscribers, I'm going to show you how to do two awesome things for your mods. First, add custom subclasses to existing classes. Second, give these custom subclasses brand new abilities from passives to spells. These lessons will give your mods even more flexibility, offering more chances for epic roleplaying. If being a Peanuts character is your idea of being epic. <laughs> to stay connected with my content, be sure to subscribe. It'll make it easier to contribute to my community polls where, aside from using the keyboard, most of my poll contributors said that they play Baldur's Gate 3 using a bop it that makes hysteria noises. Like my recent videos, this guide will build off of my existing content. I'll mention what you need, so check out the video description when I call attention to it. I'll make a no-cut version of this video next, focusing on being educational, so tune in if you have any lingering questions. YouTube likes that content a bit less, so please leave a few quarters on my Ko-Fi under the commission that I made. Baby want coffee. I'll also upload this full mod onto Nexus, so you can refer to the code for your own mods, editing it to make it work for your interest. Now let's begin. We're going to break this process into steps based on the files that we'll be editing. I cover more than usual in this video, so leave a comment with any questions that you have and I'll help you out. For step one, we're gonna edit the class description file, making a new subclass from an existing class. First, in a fresh copy of the class template mod, linked in the video description and used in my past videos, where you've already updated the meta file, go to the public folder, rename the example folder to pigpen, then open up the lsx file at the following path. Second, delete everything in this file except the node for a subclass, as shown. Third, using my last video showing how to get existing game IDs for everything that's already in the game, open the class description file in that repository following the shared folder within the public folder. Fourth, search for the thief substring or whatever subclass that you're interested in and find the class description that has thief in the name of the class description node. Copy and paste this into your class template mod file as shown. Now we're going to replace a few fields. Fifth, create new unique handles for the class description and display name fields using the Baldur's Gate 3 Modders multi-tool. You can learn how to install it following the link in the video description. Sixth, change the name. I recommend making it the subclass name without any spaces, so Pigpen. Or if you want to be more original and really unlock that creativity, Pen Pig. For progression table UUID and UUID, use the modders multi-tool again to create new, unique UUIDs for these fields. Last, delete the template file's remnant of the subclass node, which was kept just to ensure that we didn't lose the appropriate line spacing. Step 2 will involve the progressions file, where we're going to finalize our new rogue subclass. For this, keep the class descriptions file open. Open the lsx file in the following path. First, we need the progressions code for the rogue subclass. Go to the matching progressions file in the unpacked existing game code folder within the shared directory of the public directory. Second, search for rogue, finding the node that has this under the name, and copy it. Third, paste this node into your progressions file above the main class node. Fourth, Following the main class template node as an example, add a subclass subnode to the rogue class that was pasted above 
paste it where it needs to be within that main class so you have the subclass listed. Then paste in the UUID from your class description file into the line as indicated. Here we're going to use the UUID field from class description and not the progression table UUID field. You can now delete the template files main class and multi-class blocks to clean it up and prevent errors. Fifth, move to the subclass node. Change the name to your subclass name or pig pen. Or if you want to make a vegan rogue vampire subclass, beet will juice. Sixth, change the table UUID to the progression table UUID that you had in the class description file. Seventh, use the modders multi-tool to make a new UUID for the UUID field. Great, so you have officially added a bare bones subclass to an existing class. Have any questions or issues? Let me know in the video comments and I'm happy to help you out. Now we're gonna make this more interesting with custom abilities. Keep the progressions file open for the moment. Step three will involve making a new passive for our custom subclass. Since Pigpen constantly exudes dust, we're gonna make it so our subclass has constant passive stealth. First, open the passive.txt file at the following path. Second, open up the passive.txt file at the matching path in the unpacked existing code files. Proceed to search for Halfling Lightfoot Stealth as shown. Or if you want to make it more in character with my fanfiction, choose Regeneration Vampire Young Astarian. Third, copy this entire spell. Fourth, back in your passive.txt file, replace everything with this pasted existing spell. Fifth, make a new name and make unique handles for the class description and display name using the modder's multi-tool. Passive is ready. Step four involves creating two new unique abilities for our subclass, which we're going to automatically give on character creation for simplicity. First, delete the other files because we don't need them and they can make things a little bit more complicated than we need for the moment. Make a new txt file in the same folder as the passive.txt file and name it something unique like spell underscore pigpen.txt and then open it. Second, we're going to paste two existing spells into our file. Open the spell target.txt file in the prior path that you were just at in the unpacked files. Then find the target underscore charm person block and then paste this into your file. I wanted the irresistible dance spell for my second ability, which is in the shared dev folder of the public folder rather than the shared, but it's still the same file. Find the target irresistible dance class node and copy it, pasting it into your file. Third, we're gonna make our spells more interesting. For each spell, edit the entry name to make it something a little bit more unique. In my case, target adorable filth and target irresistible peanuts dance. Fourth, create new handles for your spell's display name and description, deleting the extended description field. Fifth, change the level for when your character gets the spell to whatever you want. Given the mod's theme and to make testing a little bit easier, I changed it to level one so the player could use it immediately. Sixth, I wanted to make the adorable filth spell a little bit more grungy, so I changed the cast sound to another cast sound that I found in that spell target.txt file in the unpacked files. You can look around to find whatever you want. I chose acid arrow, but you could also choose something that maybe sounds a little bit more like ravishing, like infectious bite wolf. Note that I actually haven't tested that sound yet or really know what it sounds like. So be sure to let me know in the video comments if it's not really very adorable and a little bit too grungy. Seventh, I wanted to make it so my character could use these spells using level one spell slots. So I changed the use cost field to be all ones. Eighth, I wanted to make it so a pig pen oriented subclass could use its canonical spells more frequently. So I made the recharge values smaller. This is also where you can make the spells pretty overpowered if you're into that. Ninth, 
Repeat the process for your other ability, and feel free to play around with the IDs and really everything with existing code to make it exactly as you want it. This is a great chance to familiarize yourself with everything and produce something that really kind of reflects what, what you're looking for from the class. That file had the most steps for us to do in this video, so take a breather if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. It'll get a lot easier from here. Step 5 will be about ensuring that our character can use these abilities. First, we need to create a list where we put in the spells so your character can ultimately select them. Go to the list folder in the public slash pigpen folder and open up the spell list.lsx file. You can delete the passive list and skill list.lsx files to make things more concise. Second, make a new node as shown. In the spells field, Put the names of your spells from the header lines in the spells underscore pigpen.txt file into this field separated by a semicolon. Third, make a new UUID using the modders multi-tool. Fourth, return to the progressions file that you previously left open. Now we're going to add these spells to your subclass. Let the hopefully ravishing sounding adorable filth spell be accessible. In the passives added field, paste in the name of your passive ability. Now, Pigpen has stealth. Because apparently, per the skill's original naming, halflings implicitly have stealth. Probably because they're short, so you have to look down to see them. Six, copy over the selectors field from the main class and paste it into your subclass node, removing the text from between the quotes. In the selectors field, paste in the following. This will automatically give your subclass those spells that you just created without them having to be unlocked or manually selected in character creation. You also need to add an option to select ability bonuses, which is essential so your HP starts at something aside from just one. The needed string is in the mod files that I put up on Nexus, in the video description and shown on the screen. Thank you to SP Hades 6313 for figuring this out. Seventh, since the rogue class doesn't have any spell points which are needed to use these spells, we're going to manually give the subclass spell points. Copy over the boost field from the main class and paste it into your subclass node again removing the text between the quotes. Add the following code to the boost field. Give the subclass four level one spell slots. Fantastic, that is everything that needs to be added to your mod. Now, we need to ensure that the names and descriptions of all these abilities and your new subclass show up as we want them to in game. For step six, open up the localization folder and open the XML file, which is available at the following path. All you have to do here is just paste in all the handles that you created over the course of the video. While it feels like we did a ton, which we kind of did, we only have to refer to three files, class descriptions, passive.txt, and spell underscore pigpen.txt. Have fun with these descriptions. Since Peanuts is pretty G-rated, I called the charm spell Adorable Filth and the dance spell Forced Dance. Let me know in the video comments the G-rated spells that you're planning on making. After you put these in, use lslib to make the actual localization file with a guide on how to do this using one of my past videos which is in the video description. We are finally at step one where we can make our pack mod and test it out in game. Use the modders multi-tool to make the pack file, load the pack file into Baldur's Gate 3 mod manager, then run the game. To see how to do each step refer to the video that I have in the video description. Now let's see how Baldur's Gate 3 looks. As we can see, our subclass appears under Rogue with the spells that we just created. Once we launch our game, we'll have a Rogue with spell points, capable of casting these spells while also having that passive stealth ability. Best part of this subclass is that you can have a stealthy character without having to be short if you prefer having a taller character. As you saw, producing new subclasses for existing classes and new abilities takes a few steps. 
but it is by no means unapproachable. Like general coding, if you approach problems systematically, you can do amazing things. Like providing wholesome expansions to people's childhoods. If you found this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. And if there's another video that you'd like to see, or just want to chat about the content, leave a suggestion or a blurb in the comment section. I'm keeping a running tally of the suggestions and have a lot more exciting content to show you in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Starship out. A goblin healer. We really are desperate, aren't we? Get me out of here, and I'll tell you where to find her. Deal?